Celebrities in the basement, the place to be. Karen Wilder Martin on your TV. Politics, drama, music, sports, arts. Favorite celebs climbing the charts. First hand info on the live. Careers, next projects on the rise. Come visit Karen every week. Never know who's in the hot seat. Celebrities in the basement is the place. creative duo, filmmakers, award-winning filmmakers, Philadelphia natives, Atit Lanier and Mike Pender. Welcome, welcome. How you doing? Thank welcome. you so much for coming out Thank to Celebrities in the Basement. Yes, I really appreciate you taking your time out of your busy production schedule to come visit us here. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's start out by asking, how did you get the acting bug? Um, <clears throat> acting for me was something, I would tell you funny, when I was a kid, acting was something I didn't, I didn't even really put too much thought into. I didn't think it was the most masculine thing to do. Mm -hmm. So what I need to say is that, um, I want to say a couple years ago, back in like the mid-90s, the mid what have you, um, I went to church, mm -hmm. and I went to church of all places, praise the Lord. Yes. I went to church and basically, <laughs> um, during the week and this lady was saying that she was doing a play mm -hmm. and I was like okay and she was like did you you know want a part in a play and I was like yeah you know I want some little small part I can come on stage just walk off real quick you know do some real hard masculine stuff right so I actually um <laughs> I um I read for the play and like a week passed and she was like oh by the way you're gonna be my play I said oh that's cool okay mm -hmm. I got a little part talking about she's gonna make you the lead and I wow. was like I said when are rehearsals she's like rehearsals are on um Tuesday and Thursdays I said like, well you know what I play football right now, so mm -hmm. the semi-pro football team, so I really can't be, you know, Tuesday and Thursdays conflicting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She was like, are you going to the NFL? I yes. said, oh no. I'm saying, she was like, okay, I'll see you next week. And I was like, what? <laughs> so basically I made a decision where I, I said I'd give it a week. Mm -hmm. And after a week of acting, um, I found it was much harder than it looked. Yes. And I respected yes. it that much more. Absolutely. And after yes. that, I developed, like you say, the quote unquote acting bug mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um from there i just was like hungry i was just yes. like you know i got this more this it's this stage thing this lights really i'm loving now, how this. did you yes. two gentlemen meet um actually um i met atif um in 1998 we mm -hmm. were actually doing a student project okay. i was assistant director mm -hmm. and i was one of the actors and mm -hmm. um atif was one of the um one of the leads mm -hmm. and um we were actually forced to ride together to the location and this guy actually didn't like me at first. But, okay, uh, okay. Sometimes we that happens. Yeah, no, that's okay. I didn't take it personally. Right. He just didn't know me. So, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. You know, we were riding to a location, and um, he was playing Tupac because he was a big Tupac fan. Mm -hmm. My fault, he is a big Tupac fan. Yes. So mm -hmm. um, he was playing, uh, was it Me Against the World album? And mm -hmm. I, I just said out loud, I was like, you know what? This underrated album. And it was like, ever since then, I haven't been able to shut him up. So, right. <laughs> no, yes, yes. Like you said, basically, we, 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 were, we were talking. But actually, he, he met me a little... We actually talked before then. Mm -hmm. When I first got cast in the project, he was actually the AD, like you said, and he mm -hmm. called me basically to say that I wanted you to come for get familiar with the lead actress. Mm -hmm. And me thinking I was like Denzel Washington, said, no, man, you know what? And he quickly called me the phone. I said, yeah, somebody paid your teeth. He said, yeah, this is Mike Pender, assistant director. I said, no, you know what, man? I said, thanks a lot for all that, right? But you know what, man? I'm cool, right? I said, once I get on set, it's going to be all magic. He was like, okay. So I was like, yeah. I said, so no need for me to come through. I said, I'll just see you on set, and I'm right. represent once I get there. Yeah, the you know, Denzel, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm Denzel, you know what I mean? I'm cool, you know what I mean? Yes, yes. So that's how, that's how he and I met, and that was 11 years ago, and um, mm -hmm. he and I have worked together ever since. Oh, that's a blessing. That's yes. a blessing. Now, you're both born and raised in Philadelphia. Where are you from originally? Um, yeah, I was born in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. um, I was North Philly baby. Um, up until whoop, about whoop. yeah, <laughs> up until I was about thirteen, I moved mm -hmm. to South Jersey for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, small uh, township called Buna, uh, Vista Township. Mm -hmm. um, then I actually moved to Maryland for a year, and I okay. came back to Jersey um, before I went to Lincoln for a year, and went to Temple where I met this guy. Mm -hmm. So I was. Um, I was born in West Philly. Mm -hmm. West Philly, stand up. Okay, okay. Yes. and I was born in West Philly, lived in West Philly a little bit of time. <laughs> I lived in uh, West Oak Lane. Mm -hmm. I lived in um, Olney for a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then I moved out to um, Norristown, and I went to Norristown High School. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Norristown High School, you know, we hold it down. Yes. Anyway, so I um, <laughs> went to Norristown High, and um, after that, I, um, I, you know, strange enough, I didn't plan on going to Temple. Mm -hmm. um, financial aid, 
and a woman mm-hmm. um, brought me to Temple. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know. Yes. Um, <laughs> my actually name brought me to Temple, and um, when I came to Temple, I wasn't a film major. I was actually lost. Mm-hmm. Um, I became a, a bio major, and um, strange enough, through being in biology, of all things, yes. I fell into film, mm-hmm. and um, the one thing I say about him, I met him at Temple. He was the only person who was a film student who actually conversed with me and listen to you know my ideas because most people in the film department like this <laughs> what do you know you're just a bio Biology. geek you know yes, what I'm saying yes, I was like yes. when I started talking to him he actually started just, listening you know, to me it's like dude respect my stuff you. I wrote this he's <laughs> right. in there oh it's good it's real good mm, mm. I'm sitting there saying like are you talking about the food being good or my script because the other way you're getting, it's getting dirty you know what I'm saying but um <laughs> it was both <laughs> yeah, but that's how right. we end up like you know that's our song and dance so some things are meant to be because had Absolutely, I not gone to Temple yes. and went to other places I plan on go who knows where I'd be today Absolutely. You know what I mean? yes, yes. Now, Nativ, let's talk about that name change. What? what name? Your name change. Birth name. Your oh. birth name from Quay yes. to Atif. Yes. Um, you can thank my mother for that. Basically, what happened was, um, my mother, when you know, I was born in the seventies. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, the 70s was a radical time for black yes. people. Yeah, yes. radical yes. time. Mm-hmm. You wasn't naming nobody named like John or Bob or Jim. Right. You right. gonna name that strong. That strong black king name, you know yes, what I'm saying? Yes. So basically, what happened was her mother, um, she had the name Quay. Now Quay in Swahili it means kingly. Mm-hmm. In English, it means water mold. Wow. So you pretty much, when people would ask you <laughs> what does Quay mean, most people go identify with the English version of water mold. Yes. So basically, she had the name Atif, and that's no story behind that. Originally, my name was. Atif Rahim. That was, that was it. No last name, just Atif Rahim. My middle name is Rahim. It was just okay, that. Yes. Once again, the militant, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes, yes. But um, she named me Atif, <laughs> and they, the joke about it was they said, you name my Atif, they're going to call him Tifer. Mm-hmm. And my aunt said that. Yes. And strangely enough, that nickname stuck. Yes, so once my yes. name became Atif, my nickname became Tifer. And everything's his day. My family. And basically, like, we had similar objectives, but mm-hmm. we had different objectives. So basically, he had an idea for his own company called Asamo Entertainment, and uh, he had it way back then. Mm-hmm. And I was like sitting there like, what am I going to call my organization? Mm-hmm. So um, one day I was home, of all, you know, once again, the, the Lord stepped in. Mm-hmm. I was reading the Bible, yes, he Revelation, yes. of all places. I've all been fascinated with the book Revelation. There was a footnote at the bottom of the um, page that said, um, uh, Harmageddon, and it was like the top of Mount Arafat. It said the top of Mount Arafat or destruction. And I was looking for some, at the time I was 23, so I'm looking for some radical stuff, you know, some mm-hmm. radical, yeah, some deep radical stuff. Mm-hmm. So I said, you know what? I, said, I like that, because I'm going to just basically come in and make some whole new stuff. It's like, you know, I'm going to just, you know, make some whole, you know, new new things. So mm-hmm. basically, I took the eye out of it and pronounced it Harmageddon. Mm-hmm. And at first, people laughed about it. My logo was a flaming axe that had blood dripping off it. And everybody said, well, how far are you going to get for that? You know what I'm saying? It was kind of like, people yes. like, can you imagine going to sponsor? Hello, yes. we want Scary. sponsorship, right? Can yes. you sponsor this flaming bloody axe? You know what I'm saying? That's yes, kind of yes. like, so basically. Horror. You would think yeah, it was yeah, strictly horror exactly. production. Mm-hmm. But um, I did that. And, you know, my, my mom and dad was like, what the heck is this boy doing? But need to say is that I did that. And whenever I started doing something, it was Harmageddon. And, you know, entertainment. Mm-hmm. And um, he actually is, he actually is associated with my, he is not actually part of my company, but working on so much people thought, but he has own entity as well. But the thing about it is that's what it is. But our model is entertainment that awakens the mind. My actual partner is not here. His name is Harwood Duncan. Mm-hmm. Another person at the temple we met freshman year in a hallway. He always had on a master Yoda robe. And mm-hmm. I thought he was like, you know, old. He was the same age as I was. The time we were yes. both 18. I was like, oh, I thought you were like a maintenance man. You always, right. you know, yes, yes. So, but he's saying that's my business partner. He's not here, but mm-hmm. the, what sep- I mean, what keeps all together is that we're all friends. So, mm-hmm. granted, fact we have separate entities, we work together. Everything is friendship. Lots of he and I is a handshake. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if literally if it came in, if there was like five hundred thousand dollars, I shake his hand, give him two fifty, and vice versa. That's yes. how we work. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that's yes. pretty much. And we have no problems. Me and Mike, this is the best work relationship ever had in my life. We don't have. We we rarely argue. <laughs> Celebrities in the basement, the place to be. Karen Wilder Martin on your TV. Politics, drama, music, sports, arts. Favorite celebs climbing the charts. First hand info on the live. Careers, next projects on the rise. Come visit Karen every week. Never know who's in the hot seat. Celebrities in the basement is the place to be.